So there's double hit group, and I think Leo, you're, you alluded to the fact that we actually may know. You know, we 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 think we know a lot about it, but we don't really know what to do about it. Uh, but I think right. it's it's worth talking about. You know, despite those limitations, you know, I mean, our, there are people there are people who use you know our epoc mm -hmm. uh, as therapy rather than our chop. Uh, there, you know, there have, has been the suggestion that adding uh, you know lenalidomide in, in, in the form of our squared chop uh, can improve outcomes. Um, your, what is your practice? Well, you know, I think, first of all, the, there, there's a group of these high-grade lymphomas that under the microscope were high-grade, so bur uh, Burkitt lymphoma, and large cell lymphomas with a very high uh, proliferative index, which is somewhere between diffuse large B cell and Burkitt, and we've traditionally called those high-grade lymphomas. They tend to have high LDHs, they tend to have a more aggressive course. Um, I don't think we know what to do with those. Burkitt lymphoma has been treated with a more aggressive regimen with central nervous system prophylaxis, Codoxam or Hypercevat from the NB Anderson group. I've tended to use Hypercevat in that group of patients just because I grew up with it. It was developed at Children's Memorial Hospital locally by Cher Murphy, and so, um, you know, I've been used to using that regimen. Um, so we've tended to use it for that, and then we looked at the uh, we look at the uh, double hit lymphomas, and if you look at the WHO 2016 classification, they are now, by definition, considered to be high-grade lymphomas. It's sort of now all the double hit lymphomas are going to be high-grade. I think the problem is we don't know how to, how to treat them. There are clinical trials ongoing. We're looking at exastamib, uh, a, uh, a proteasome inhibitor. There was some preclinical data suggesting that might influence CMIX, so we're combining that with dose-adjusted epoch r um, that became uh, a regimen that uh, that we used, that we've tended to use that or hypercevad because there was a sense that it was more aggressive, although or a better regimen. Uh, although there are data going to be presented at, at this meeting from the Alliance Group comparing in just a group of unselected diffuse large B cell lymphoma patients, uh, our CHOP versus dose-adjusted epoch R with no apparent differences in outcome. Not enough data yet to say is there a subgroup advantage to the more aggressive uh, patients. I think the key message is that these are patients, the high-grade lymphomas, including the double hit, that tend to recur in the central nervous system. So some central nervous system prophylaxis, I think, is uh, warranted. Um, the question of whether that central nervous system recurrence is leptomeningeal, where maybe intrathecal methotrexate might be beneficial, or is it parenchymal? as we sometimes see in lymphomas and extranodal sites, just as testis or breast, uh, so that we should maybe th be thinking about high-dose methotrexate instead of uh, intrathecal uh, therapy. And I think, so I think that's the upfront treatment. The question always is, um, should we be transplanting these patients? And uh, should we be thinking about an autologous transplant, or should we be thinking about an allogeneic transplant? And, you know, I alluded to this earlier, I think uh, it, as we now check CMIC by fish in everybody, I think when we, we're going to see that maybe they're not quite as bad as we thought they were, not all of them anyway, because we were looking at CMIC and fish by fish in patients who had characteristics that we thought might predict that they were positive, so they looked aggressive. But now if we look in everybody, there are some that might behave in a better way. I'll say that we have at our institution in general moved toward an, a sort of consolidation transplant in these patients. It's something that I don't... With an auto? With an auto. Like the way you do it for mantle cell, for like, example? Well, it's interesting. I, we, it, most, many people are, I do it in mantle cell. I have not been convinced on the data in mantle cell. Um, I, uh, as we hear, at the, we've heard at this meeting that, that the maintenance might be uh, uh, as good, but I, I think that. So you're talking um, about consolidative auto and not an. Thinking allogenic about transplant. consolidative auto, um, but uh, certainly in people that relapse quickly after initial therapy, even before you get to the auto, then either an allogeneic transplant or perhaps CAR T approach mm -hmm. might be the the thing that we're thinking about.